Tilt down. Good. Start lower. I'm going to hold the bottom of the helmet as she crosses through the threshold. And action. I can't remember when, but my mom had emailed me because one of her good friends reads everything and had told her Rooney has to be the girl with the dragon tattoo. She's perfect for it. I looked it up and I saw the pictures from the Swedish thing and I was like, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like, <laughs> whatever. But I forwarded it to my agent because I always do if there's a project that my mom from books like thinks would be good. and. So I sort of like was tracking it from even before and then when I found out that I hadn't read the books yet or seen the movies and when I found out David was going to do it, um, then I kept like really inquiring about it. One day I was talking to Lorraine who does casting early on when I first went in and was trying to start prepping and doing vibe boards and she was just like, I have seen thousands of tapes. You know, it was the whole thing of where she said everyone you could imagine sent in. Everyone who th who'd read the book thought they were this girl, librarians from Ohio <laughs> to like soccer moms from Miami, like whatever, you know, sent in tapes. And you know, she's like, we kind of have to look at everything because you never know, you don't want to miss someone. I went and saw the Swedish movie with my friend and she was like, why did we see that? Like, which girl are you like going into meet for? Like. Harriet, like that's such a small part. Why are you making me go see this movie like for your dad? And I was like, no, the girl. And she was like, <laughs> you can't play that girl. And I was like, fuck you, I can do whatever I want. But I did, after I saw that, I was like, God, like she's incredible. One of the things that was wonderful about the Swedish film was knew me was, was this person that you, you know, she just leaps fully you know, rendered from the forehead of Zeus, and you kind of go, okay, there it is. And, and that somebody can kind of come out of nowhere. I felt that that was a important aspect. It becomes a much more difficult thing to actually do. Action, action, action. Are we on two? We were on two. Now I don't know where we're going. I don't know where we're going. Either. Let's go back to one. We saw a lot of people. We saw a lot of wonderful people, a lot of people who are really talented and really eager and ready to give it their all. David denies this, but he did not want me to read for it at first. I got an email from my agent saying, you know, David doesn't think you're right for it. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to see you for it. And I was like, okay, I can understand that because I don't think I'm right for it either. But then, you know, like all of this stuff was coming out about this person's going up for it or that person. And I was like, wait, if those people or maybe write for it, then there's no reason he should not see me to read for this part. Actually, Sion brought her up. Sion said, uh, what about Rooney? And I was like, and Rooney's kind of, you know, we cast her in Social Network because she was sort of Catherine Ross. You know, I wanted that squeaky clean, the girl who got away. You know, on Social Network, I literally was only there for four days. I, I didn't really get to know David at all. and. I don't think he really got to know me except for as Erica Albright. And Erica Albright, of all the parts, I really don't understand that kind of person. I don't know how to be Susie College. I don't really think that I'm that girl. But I think, you know, because I was only there for four days, that's sort of how David saw me was as Erica Albright. They were having people come in and read um, a poem. You had to choose a poem and read it in a Swedish accent. And I had picked a poem and prepared it, and then literally a few days before, Lorray emailed me sides and was like, I really want you to actually read. You know, no one's come in and read from the script yet, but I, I would rather you read sides than a poem. Um, so I did the scenes, and then I think it was like a week later, I was at some film festival in Provincetown, Rhode Island, and Lorray called me with my manager, and she was like, David emailed me in the middle of the night, and you know, these are the things he wants you to know. Like, he, he really responded to your tape, he wants to test you, but he wants you, you know, because you guys have worked together and he knows you, he feels that you need to know these things before you go any further into this. And she basically just gave me, you know, if you get this part, you're gonna have to become a smoker, you're gonna have to learn to ride a motorcycle, you're gonna have to cut your hair, you're gonna have to do this, you're gonna have to be naked. She just gave me, you know, a laundry list of basically reasons why if you don't want to do those things, then don't bother coming in to test. So I think after I got that call, I knew he was really serious about me. And action. 
and that's when I read the books. I had seen the movies at that point, but I didn't want to read the books until I knew that I had a serious chance at it, because I know myself, and I knew if I read the books, I would become obsessed, and then it would just be that much harder if I didn't get the part. And the tall guy on the inside. Okay, I was just, I had the tall guy on the inside because I wanted to accentuate Rooney's smallness. But that's okay. Should I take off my shoes? <laughs> we don't see your shoes. Okay, here we go. You're making an iconic movie about a character who's supposed to be really short. I tried. When I read the books, I was like, I can do this. What she did is incredible, but there was room for a completely different interpretation. So I was really nervous about it up until I had finished reading the books, and then I was like excited that I could bring my own thing to it. It's not daylight anymore. This is when she's going for a candy bar, so it's nighttime. Okay. So we're just gonna come straight down the middle of this on the 21. Um, I think we're gonna want to be up kind of this height, and uh, I'll stabilize it later. So let's put a. Okay, so let's get squared off to the middle of the square off the camera. She'll come along here. You know, I used to feel very much that it's your job as a director to nurture. Got it. And I feel less and less of that as, as my life. I, I feel like I want to see an inspired take on something, but I want to see it in the first three or four takes of an audition tape. Somebody who comes in the zone already. Keep your eyes down here, and then you can line up on the camera better. Because it's okay for you to look. You, I won't be as aware of you being aware of the camera if your eyes are low. Okay. And then you ring them out. We had three scenes that we were supposed to do, and then three days before the test, they sent the rape revenge scene. And they were like, oh, we've added this scene. And I was like, you've just added this scene? It's like seven pages long. It's the hardest scene in the script. Don't worry, I appreciate that one. So that was really scary, but I knew that they really meant business when they sent that scene, because that scene really weeds out, you know, the people who can or can't play the part. Take a bite out of this. Mmm. <laughs> the Solander thing was just a big deal. I mean, I don't know really the ins and outs of it. Hey, Mark. I mean, I kind of think I can guess now is that David had already made up his mind and maybe that all the auditioning that we were doing was just sort of going through the motions probably that's the case I think but um, I think he you know he'd, he'd, he'd set his mind to it and I think it was uh, it was something really worth fighting for he knew what he wanted and he was correct every time the studio would say come on stop showing us this girl show us somebody else and with a new cadre of potential right. victims I would bring Rooney back in. And in the end, I wanted the puppy that nobody wanted. I wanted the puppy that was left in the window who was still there, you know, wagging its tail. I wanted that person who was indomitable, you know. She's not a sprinter, she's a hurdler. You just keep lining them up and she'll jump them. That's kind of what I wanted from Lisbeth. I wanted somebody who wouldn't quit. I think we need a little bit more pale makeup on. I know. Come on. Thorsten? Yeah? You gotta pale her up a little bit. She's looking too cute. Okay, Rainey, is that where you are when you stand up? And it's funny because we screen tested, okay. not funny, funny. It was actually kind of cruel. But we, um, but it was interesting that, um, you know, probably screen tested her five or six times. A year ago today was my first audition for the part. The day I was told that I got the part, I think it was August 16th. And what, today's June 9th? So that was over two months of trying out to get the part. Um, and we did about like three or four screen tests, like actual screen tests, and then like three or four like secret tests with just David and Trish and a photographer where we just tried different looks. I kept getting a call like on Friday, like we're gonna test again tomorrow. So then we'd go in on Saturday and dress Rooney up and her and David would go into the streets and just take stills or like little video footage of her just in the subway and her walking up and down Hollywood Boulevard, just kind of putting her in a natural habitat, you know. It started to become this joke because it was, you know, Rooney was always the one coming back. There was her and like two other girls or something that would come back and we had all kind of the headshots in my office with all our other vision boards. And after we'd go do a read, I would like turn over who I didn't think was going to make it. And then one day David came in the office and looked over and I ran over and I flipped him back over, like kind of embarrassed. Um, but yeah, she was 
it was, you know, it was grueling on them. And I think it was really grueling on Rooney. And, you know, it was just, we. I'd lay out, I bought similar clothing for all the girls that would come in. And I'd lay sets with some top options and things in their rooms. And then I wanted to see how they'd put it all together. And so it was kind of good because Rooney, like every time it was exactly, like exactly the same. You know, and then some of the other girls would kind of change their things up, thinking like, maybe this is going to make it better, you know, if I wear something differently this way. For two months, I was like, you know, ready and willing to do and show them anything to get the part. But, you know, sort of closer to August 16th, I was really like, okay, I need to either move on with my life or do this. Like, you guys have to... I was getting really fed up with being jerked around so much. I was like, what else could I possibly show you? I've shown you everything. Um, so I was supposed to be going to New York for a photo shoot for the social network for Elle magazine. And Lorraine Mayfield called me up and was like, Rooney, we need you to come in one more time. And I was like, I can't. I'm going to New York for the social network for Elle magazine. And she was like, you have to tell them that you have food poisoning. Like, I wasn't allowed to tell them that it was for David and it was for Girl with the Dragon Tattoo because it was a secret or whatever. Because a lot of our little tests were secrets. Um, and I was like, so frustrated at that point. I was like, you want me to lie to people and it's gonna make me look bad. Like, it's not even a good story that I have food poisoning. And you want me to come in again so that you can like take pictures of me on the motorcycle. Like, what the fuck is, like, this is ridiculous at this point. Like, you either want me and think that I can be this girl and do this part or you don't. And you need to just decide. But of course, I was like, all right, whatever you guys want, I'll tell them I have food poisoning, I'll come in. So I went to David's office, I think around 8.30 or 9 o'clock. And he starts rambling on, as David does. And he's asking me sort of about how I respond to hearing things and I didn't understand like what he was getting at and then he goes into this long thing about all of the terrible things that would come out of playing this part for whoever played the part he's going on and on and how about how it would you know change your life and not necessarily for the better you know for all the the shit that comes along with playing a part like this and he goes on about you know Vivian Lee was incredible in a streetcar named Desire, but she will always be Scarlett O'Hara. And if you do this right, whoever does this, if they do it right, they will be, you know, Ginger from Gilligan's Island. And he's just going on and on about, you know, basically all the reasons why someone shouldn't play the part. And then he pulls out his iPad and he hands it to me and, and I look at it and it's a press release that says that I have the part. And he's like, I'm willing and prepared to send that out at 10 o'clock you have a half an hour to decide whether or not you want me to. I just sort of looked at it, I really, I didn't even flinch, I just looked at it and I was like, you can send it out whenever you want. I've had two and a half months to think about all the things that you just said and I actually have thought about all the things you just said. I have considered them. I haven't just gone into this, you know, not knowing those things and you can send it out. It's unfortunate that you have to do that stuff because I think probably two or three screen tests into what we were doing, I kind of made up my mind. I was like, this is somebody, this is an idea to fall on the grenade for. I don't know that she can do it, but I know that she will fucking try. And I think if she can be inspired and she can be supported, but not coddled, maybe just cut her loose. She got the gig and we basically chopped all her hair off and told her to get out of the sun and stop eating and she became Lisbeth. Bob, who I didn't know as Bob back then, he was just sort of the mean <laughs> first AD, <laughs> comes up to me and he's like, you know, um, he gives me a list of, of all the training that I'm gonna be starting. And he's like, can I get you? Like, do you need anything? And I was like, well, I haven't seen the script yet. Could I <laughs> read the script? I hadn't even read the script yet at that point. So then they brought me the script and I went into one of the conference rooms and read it. And then an hour later I was, learning how to disassemble a computer and getting on the motorcycle and doing skateboarding. And literally five days later, I was in Stockholm. So it was two months building up to, is this gonna happen, is this gonna happen? And then I had five days to literally pack up my life and, and jump into it.
When I got to Stockholm, you know, I would walk around the city a lot alone listening to music. And I remember, I think it was like maybe two days into being there, I was walking around and it just like all hit me. And I was like, this is so fucking crazy. Like, I can't believe I'm here and seeing all of the places in the book that I've read about. And that was when it really hit me. I, up until then, I didn't even let myself, you know, be excited or happy. I just went straight into work. And I remember sitting in Stockholm being like, this is so cool.